Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we're talking Unity Biotechnology, ticker symbol UBX. As a disclaimer, this is not investment advice. This is just a research video that I put together meant to be educational as well as entertaining. I'm going to put you into a few different news clippings and articles surrounding the company as of recently. We're going to hear from the CEO of Unity Biotechnology on what they're working on. Then we're going to take a look at their stock. Thank you for your time. Please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you enjoy. Here's a deceptively simple question. How come when we get older, we get sicker? Well, we're not so arrogant to believe we know all the reasons why this happens. There's probably a half dozen primordial mechanisms that work together collectively to create the thing we all call aging. But we think we know one mechanism, and it's this. This is you at conception. You're a single cell. Over the arc of your life, this cell, you, will divide perhaps 50 times. And at some point along that arc, every cell in your body will pull an emergency brake and stop dividing forever. Now, cells that pull this emergency brake are called senescent cells. And this is a super important emergency brake. You don't want to mess with it. In mice, if we genetically perturb this emergency break, mice are born normally, but wind up full of tumors before reaching reproductive age. So don't mess with the emergency break. However, as we age, these so-called senescent cells accumulate in our bodies. So my son here, who's eight, has no detectable senescent cells, whereas my stepfather, who died at 87 from Alzheimer's, was full of these cells. Now, before our work, no one knew if these accumulated senescent cells were good for you, bad for you, or neither. And so what my group did at Unity, in collaboration with groups both at the Mayo Clinic and at the Buck Institute, is we created multiple strains of mice where we could clear these accumulated senescent cells whenever we wanted. And for the first time, we were in a position to ask, what happens? Well, this is what happens. These mice are siblings, born within seconds of each other from the same mom. And to give you a sense of their age, these mice are about 70 years old, assuming you were a mouse. Now, which one do you want to be? The one on the left is blind, osteoporotic, and frail. The one on the right lives 35% longer, but more importantly, has a profoundly extended period of something we call health span the period of time this animal lives free of chronic diseases of aging. Well, we're making drugs that will do that in people. And we think that's pretty cool. Thank you. Okay, I just wanted to highlight this article from CNBC. And it was taken just over two years ago. Why Jeff Bezos is backing this Silicon Valley scientist who is working on a cure for aging. So I'm not going to go through the entire article but definitely wanted to highlight the key points. The U.S. population is aging. By 2035, older people will outnumber those under 18 for the first time in American history, according to the U.S. Census Bureau. Unity Biotechnology is a company designing drugs and treatments that can make a person functional and free of the diseases associated with aging for as long as possible. The company, backed by Jeff Bezos and Peter Thiel, went public in May and is listed on the NASDAQ. So I'll leave the link to this article in the show notes. But, you know, from what we heard uh, in the TED Talk that Nathaniel David might actually have a shot. Uh, the Unity Biotechnology president is really, really pushing this. And it was once a zeitgeist uh, last year. I know that in 2019, uh anti-aging and all of the research and funding for aging research was pretty much at its, I guess, at, at its tipping point. So I think moving forward, uh, Unity is going to really be among the leaders in this uh, field. So just a little insight into the uh, investors of this company, which is based out of Brisbane, California, has received more than $300 million in funding, including $85 million raised after going public in May of 2018. Amazon founder Jeff Bozos and PayPal co-founder Peter Thiel 
are also investors. Today, the company's market cap is $700 million. Now, I don't know exactly where it's at. We can take a look at some of the fundamentals uh, uh, a little bit later. But I just wanted to highlight you know, these two big name uh, investors that are backing this company. And usually, when that type of news or those type of investors are part of a company like this, it's for the most, I guess... Um, on the surface, it seems like they have what these uh, two investors are looking for. So we'll continue on with the video, but I just definitely wanted to showcase this article. Okay, so let's take a quick look at Unity Biotechnology's website. We're going to highlight the pipeline, what they are working on, and some of the research topics that they are leading the way in. And as far as their musculoskeletal, their ophthalmology, their neurology, and other programs, we are seeing how far the development is, right, with some of their phases and where they're at. So their osteoarthritis, their mechanism P53 MDM2 inhibition, they are either in the midway or about to finish up with phase two. And then we can see also to, you know, where they're at in the early stages, right, of some of their other programs and this just kind of helps me as an investor kind of understand where the company is allocating their research their their tools for success and i think that it helps to understand also where the company is heading toward so they're not just strictly looking for anti-aging and then that's it they want to be a little bit more uh, diverse in into what they are doing. In, in my opinion, I think that it's good to see that they have these other programs uh, that all are beneficial to what the sector is calling for. So a biotechnology company that is not just solely, like I said, not just solely structured upon anti-aging, I think is a little bit more set up for success versus a company that is geared strictly for one type of mechanism or one type of program. So I just thought I would showcase this from their website. And again, it helps me as an investor appreciate the types of things that they are working on over there at Unity. Let me just highlight the lead product candidates. And I think that it's important for a company such as Unity to have a niche, right? And not just be so solely concentrated on one specific thing. However, it is nice to see that they are making good strides or, or, or strong strides in a certain area. So let's take a look at this product candidate. UBX1325 is being evaluated for the treatment of age-related diseases of the eye, including diabetic macular edema, diabetic retinopathy, and age-related macular degeneration. UBX1325 is a synolytic small molecule inhibitor of BCL-XL, a member of the BCL2 family of apoptosis regulatory proteins. The compound targets proteins that senescent cells rely on for survival. A phase one study will explore the initial safety and tolerability of UBX1325 in patients with diabetic macular edema. UBX1967 remains in the portfolio as a molecularly distinct backup to UBX1325. So again, I think that it's important that we see here that one of their strongest candidates is very specific for the niche of diabetic macular edema, a diabetic retinopathy, the age-related macular degeneration. So some the things that are being targeted to the eye, diseases of the eye. So unless you can find a company that is strictly just all about that, this is what is showing me that the company is looking at holding and kind of being that that staple for treatment of the eye. So again, I wanted to just highlight the lead product candidates. And again, when we look back up to their pipeline, we're seeing that it is the UBX1325 and UBX1967. They're still in the earlier stages. However, they are making great strides. And it's not like these types of things just, you just snap their, your fingers and all of a sudden they're available 
for people with these types of problems. So again, I think that it's important to understand what the company is doing with the type of strides that they're, they are making in the field for their, their niches. So just wanted to highlight this. Okay, so let's continue to follow through. I'm here on the clinicaltrials.gov website, and we're going to take a look at the safety and tolerability study of UBX1325 in patients with diabetic macular edema. So the recruitment status is that it's recruiting. It first posted September 3rd of this year, and it last posted its November 3rd updates. And let's just see that the sponsor is Unity Biotechnology, and the information is provided by Unity Biotechnology. So I'd imagine that there would be other parties involved with these types of testing. So that it's here on this website, it's just going to just, I just want to understand what's going on with the, the study. So brief study, a study to evaluate safety, tolerability, and pharmacokinetics of a single intravitreal injection of UBX1325 in patients diagnosed with diabetic macular edema. So again, the this type of study is fascinating for me because one, you have to have participants that one, have the condition or disease, two, that they're willing to take the injection and that it will follow through with the entire phase process, if I understand it correctly. So we see that it's in phase one and they're receiving a dose of the UBX1325, 21 participants, and I imagine that the number of participants will continue to grow as the phases uh, move forward or they show progress, if I am understanding that correctly. We're going to see here, which is important for me as an investor, that the actual study start date, which was October of this year, the estimated primary completion date, January of next year, the estimated study completion date won't be until July 2021. And feel free to drop a comment, and I don't know 100% about phase one trial studies, phase two. So if this estimated study completion date, I'll do my own research after the video to figure out whether or not this July 2021 date is just stating that the phase one trial will be done. And then phase two will take place, and phase three will will correspond after that. But again, I just wanted to showcase this from the website and what we're looking for as far as outcome measurements, secondary outcome measures, the plasma concentration of UBX1325 following a single intravitreal injection up to 24 hours post-dose. We're looking at some of the eligibility criteria. As I mentioned, the ages of everyone here is 18 years and older. And I'll leave this web uh, this link in the show notes. So that way, if you want to read over it a little bit more, uh, you'll feel free to to do that. But I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, the July 2021 date uh, for me uh, means a lot as far as we can kind of target that date with some more relative news regarding this phase one study. Okay, so on to some more recent news. This article is taken from Seeking Alpha, Unity Biotech down 48% pre-market on stumble with lead drug. Unity Biotechnology's lead candidate, UBX0101, a P53 MDM2 interaction inhibitor, fell to sufficiently separate from placebo at week 12 in a phase 2 clinical trial in patients with moderate to severe osteoarthritis of the knee. Specifically, there was no statistically significant difference between any of the three dose arms and the control arm as measured by the primary endpoint, a scale called WOMAC-A. The company does not expect to advance UBX0101 into pivotal studies, opting instead to concentrate on its ophthalmologic and neurologic disease programs. The results will be submitted for a presentation at a future medical conference. Wall Street rating is bullish. And shares down 48% pre-market. So I'm going to, I'll highlight the chart coming up here, but I just thought I would share uh, some news regarding a lead candidate a drug of theirs and um, what kind of impact it had on the share price. So we'll take a, well, let's move on to the chart now. Okay, so let's take a look at the six-month trading window from my trading view. 
and just gonna highlight roughly around August where we had some news about their osteoarthritic treatment and one of their drugs, one of their lead candidates that they announced that they were no longer gonna pursue any movement going for going uh, going going further. So they stopped around the phase two clinical trials and I'm going to highlight just some different levels of of support and resistance. So we see that it was above sixes. It had a nice run. It popped above 12. And with that news came a massive sell-off. So again, anything can happen, right? We don't know what the stock's going to do from one day to the next. However, when news comes about a certain streamline or a certain pipeline product from a company such as this stops and they're no longer going to pursue any more movement, then it's kind of focusing all into another section of their pipeline. So therefore, now we are waiting on those results. And that's kind of, how, in my opinion, how the, the share price is going to move with a company like this. So that's really all I am noticing when it comes to that massive sell-off. We had, Again, that type of news is going to affect it. So let's take a little closer look. The past month, it's had a really nice run. And I think from its lows... Uh, down in the threes, it's maintained some stair-stepping patterns of ascension, and previous levels of resistance have become new levels of support. For instance, right here, it popped up to about four dollars and three thirty cents. It traded back down. It wants to pop. It goes through that level again, finds a new level of support in the low fours. And then it's kind of been trading and ascending ever since then. So we have to kind of wait and see with any more news regarding some of their pipeline products for any more volatility. But I, as I can see it, that the company is a, such a small company relative to other biotech companies that any sort of news in their streamline with some progress can only mean positive results and so therefore i would be bullish on a company like this however i think that i will just kind of wait to see what is going on with some of their clinical trials and some of their other products but as far as i can see the the chart's been moving along just nice and it's been ascending quite well and if it goes it starts trading above five dollars then i could see the five dollar mark becoming that Right now, it's like that level of resistance for me, $5. And if it could trade above that and become $5 can become the new level of support, then I think all bullish signs are in play. So that's what I got for the chart. Okay, I want to thank you for your time. I really do appreciate it. Please continue to like, share, and subscribe. Drop me a comment. Tell me what you think. If you'd like to see me research another IPO or another company or another ETF, just please leave it in the comment section below and I would do my best to get to it as soon as possible. Again, thank you for your time. Hit that notification bell and I will see y'all on the next video.